This podcast supports podcasting 2.0. If you like this show or are getting value from it, hit the boost button now. If you don't have a boost button, you can get one now at newpodcastapps.com. I'm Scott McGregor at Scott Trades on Twitter. Welcome to the Hot Wallet Podcast, conversations about active investing and digital assets. Be sure to check us out on our official website, hotwallet.ca. We have over 30 episodes with broad-based topics, interviews, commentary, and blogs. It looks like Canada is losing another crypto exchange. Last week, Bybit released a notice on their exit from the Canadian market. This marks the second major exchange to leave the country in light of what they're calling a recent regulatory development. Binance, the world's largest exchange, announced a few weeks ago that they would also be leaving Canada amid crypto regulations. Now, this does give Canadians fewer options to buy and sell Bitcoin and crypto, but it's not all bad. I'll give you a list of registered exchanges that aren't leaving Canada here in just a minute. So the main question is why? Why is this happening? Why are they leaving? In December of 2022, the Canadian Securities Administrators provided an update to an August 2022 note that it expected commitments from unregistered crypto trading platforms operating in Canada while they pursue registration. These commitments were to be made in the form of a pre-registration undertaking, also known as a PRU. A pre-registration undertaking is a document that outlines the terms and conditions that a crypto exchange must agree to while it pursues regulation. Some of these terms and conditions include holding Canadian clients' assets with an appropriate custodian and segregating them from the exchange's own assets. Remind you of FTX, anyone? They also prohibit leverage or margin trading for any Canadian client. You may remember last year, I did a podcast laying out that margin trading was being banned in Canada. And so the CSA doesn't want crypto exchanges in Canada giving anyone leverage. And so they have to agree that they're not going to do that. Now, some of these crypto exchanges have found these regulations to be too burdensome or costly to implement, especially if they're based outside of Canada. Canada is a small market after all. Essentially, what they're doing is they're asking crypto exchanges to comply with the same regulations as money service businesses, which include due diligence, reporting, verification, and record keeping. These requirements are meant to protect Canadian investors and prevent illicit activities through crypto transactions. The CSA has also stated issues with stable coins. They say stable coins may constitute securities or derivatives. For those who are unaware, stable coins are a type of cryptocurrency that are pegged to a fiat currency or another asset to maintain stable value. The CSA says that crypto exchanges are prohibited from permitting Canadian clients to trade or obtain exposure to any crypto asset that itself may be a security or a derivative. So based on all of this, Bybit says Canadian customers will no longer be able to make deposits or enter into new contracts or increase any of their existing positions for all products or services. They can, however, withdraw or reduce their positions. Anyone who is impacted by this announcement should close their account and wind down their positions by September 30th of this year. As I mentioned, they are not alone. A few weeks ago, the world's largest exchange, Binance, also announced they would exit the Great White North, citing new guidance related to stable coins and investor limits provided to crypto exchanges, making the Canadian market no longer tenable for Binance saying that they put off this decision as long as they could while they explored other reasonable avenues to protect Canadian users, but it had become apparent to them that there are none. Canadian users of Binance have until September 30th to close out their positions or move their tokens. Now, I've personally been winding down my positions in Binance over the last few weeks. I actually started before the official announcement came because I noticed that I wasn't able to buy anything. I didn't receive any indication from Binance that there was a problem with my account. And when I contacted customer service, they didn't see anything on their end either. But I noticed I was unable to do spot purchases of Bitcoin or any other crypto using my bank card. And so I took that as a sign of, hmm, something's going on here. 
and I started to move my tokens to another exchange or to a self-custody wallet. Binance says that despite Canada being a small market, it had always held a special part in founder CZ's heart because CZ from Binance is Canadian. Now, this doesn't mean that there aren't other options to buy Bitcoin and digital assets here in Canada. Here are some that aren't leaving, and please note this is not an endorsement or recommendation for any of the exchanges. I'm just letting you know that they exist, and maybe I've used one here and there. One of my favorite regulated exchanges is ShakePay. It's super simple to use. All you have to do is send an email money transfer to ShakePay, and you can buy either Bitcoin or Ethereum. You can also shake your phone and get Satoshis every single day, which is kind of neat. ShakePay is based out of Montreal. BitBuy is another Canadian exchange that you can use. They offer Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, Dogecoin, Polygon, and the like. And you can fund your account with either a Bankwire or Interac. BitBuy, <laughs> and I almost said BitBoy, by the way, claims 90% of their crypto is held in cold storage and covered by a comprehensive insurance policy. They also allow staking for Polkadot, Ethereum, Polygon, and Solana, and more are coming online soon. Coinbase is also legal in Canada. Though they are going through some security exchange commission issues in the United States, most of that has to do with staking. Now, despite some of their fees being arguably a bit high, it has been a relatively solid experience, in my experience, for spot buys and easy transfers to self-custody wallets. I also have the Coinbase wallet, which is a self-custody wallet, and it's also been fine. Kraken is another exchange that I've used in the past. Their app is intuitive and simple to use. They have good trading volume as well and a large selection of crypto with high APR staking rewards like up to 22% on Cosmos, 18% on Kusama, 21% on Polkadot, and flexible yearly rewards for Ethereum and others. They also have access to NFTs and a pro tier with high quality, customizable, real-time charts and order flow information. Finally, Gemini is also available in Canada. This is the one created by the Winklevoss twins. With Gemini, you get access to the regular players, including Bitcoin, Cosmos, Dogecoin, Avalanche, Polkadot, Filecoin, Chainlink, Aave, and other top tokens. I've used it a few times, and it's very basic. And in most cases, there's a bit of a delay between when you buy and when you're actually allowed to move those tokens off the exchange. So that may be a problem for you if you're looking to buy and move right away. So despite some of the biggest exchanges in the world leaving Canada, there are still many options for Canadian crypto bros and broettes to actively invest or hodl or whatever you want. Just be sure and pay attention to the different fees that each of the exchanges charge and consider storing your crypto in a self-custody wallet that you control the keys to. None of this is an endorsement for any of the exchanges that I've mentioned, even the ones that I currently use or have used in the past. Please do your own research and decide what makes the most sense to you based on your investing style, strategy, and time frame. My hope is that in time, large liquid exchanges like Binance are able to operate legally and under clear regulation here in Canada. Until then, I'll do my best to keep you updated with the Hot Wallet podcast. Be sure and check out our back catalog at hotwallet.ca. I'm Scott McGregor, at Scott Trades on Twitter. I'll see you next time. From the bottom, make no half stepping. I'm the dog, I made it through so they don't ask questions. Long Beach, and it ain't no half repping. Once a dog, always a dog, so they don't ask questions.